Joining us now is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Senator, thank you so much for your time. I understand that you received a classified briefing last night uh, from defense officials about everything that's happening in Ukraine. I know you can't give us specifics, but just generally from what you've learned, what do you think Russia is going to do next? Well, Allison, I, I think that Russia is uh, going to continue on uh, and be all in. Uh, and while the Ukrainians, uh, both its army and its civilians, have been courageous, heroic uh, in their efforts, uh, I do think that uh, some of the overwhelming challenges that they face by what is amassed against them uh, is going to lead uh, to greater and greater losses, uh, particularly of civilians uh, in Ukraine. We see the indiscriminate shelling of residential buildings, of hospitals. Uh, this is not uh, what um, a military exercise is supposed to be. Uh, these are, in essence, from my perspective, war crimes. You don't indiscriminately uh, attack uh, civilians. Uh, and when you have precision guided missiles. The purpose of them is to avoid uh, civilian uh, targets while attacking the target you're looking for. They're using their missiles against entities like uh, what we recently saw on your, on your channel. Well, this is why Congressman Adam Kinzinger, himself a, uh, an Iraq and Afghanistan vet, is calling for a no-fly zone over uh, Ukraine to be declared. He tweeted, declare a no-fly zone over Ukraine at the invitation of their sovereign government, disrupt Russia's air ops to give the heroic Ukrainians a fair fight. Do you agree? Well, the challenge with the no-fly zone is that you're uh, ultimately engaging in a direct conflict uh, with Russia. Uh, and that's a determination that has to be made. Uh, are we ready, uh, not only the United States, but NATO, ready to engage in a direct conflict with Russia? Because if you declare a no-fly zone and Russian aircraft flies into the zone, the only way to enforce it is to uh, take down that Russian aircraft or seek to move it out of the zone. So uh, I don't think that um, the West is ready uh, to have a direct confrontation uh, with Putin in a military context. Of course, what I've seen in my 30 years of foreign policy, I have never seen an international coalition come together as quickly and impose such punishing sanctions on oligarchs, on banks, on Putin himself, on the central bank, on Nord Stream, uh, on SWIFT in terms of some of these banks, and so much more uh, as we have seen now. And these will have uh, enormous consequences to Putin uh, back uh, in Russia. Yes, eventually they will. But I mean, even President Biden has said it's going to take a while. I think the, the term he used was a month for some of the real pain to kick in. That was before the latest round of sanctions. But I guess my point is, is that since you say that the Ukrainians are facing these uh, overwhelming challenges and it's about to get worse, what can the U.S. and the European community do now to help them? Well, just this past week, and uh, the, as the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, our committee has jurisdiction over arms sales and arms transfers, uh, and it's normally a lengthy process. Uh, I got asked uh, to approve Stinger and a whole host of other uh, lethal uh, defensive equipment. Uh, I did, uh, and it is now in Ukraine. Uh, so we have a pipeline of assistance into Ukraine uh, in terms of a variety of lethal uh, defensive uh, systems that we are providing Ukraine. We are in the midst of having uh, a significant package for Ukraine, both on the military side as well as the humanitarian side because we have seen over 600,000 Ukrainians and more that will be coming who have had to flee the country so we want to help them as well we want to help them in Ukraine not just those who have fled because as the uh, ambassador from Ukraine told us last night uh, we appreciate you all helping those that have fled but we have to help those that have stayed as well so all of that uh, is in the works by the United States government itself in your classified briefing, did you learn anything about Putin's state of mind? The reporting is, is that he is seen as becoming less rational and more erratic. I think, uh, you know, trying to get to Putin's state of mind is a challenge for our intelligence agencies. He, is, uh, he has been, especially during this uh, couple of years of COVID, uh, 
probably uh, more isolated than at any other time. Uh, and that in and of itself creates a bubble in which reality uh, is not one in which he is exposed to. Uh, plus, there are very few people who are willing to speak truth to power in a totalitarian government like Putin's government. So uh, th that in and of itself, knowing that environment, has to raise questions about what his mindset is. But as to exactly uh, what he intends to do uh, or has he become irrational, uh, versus a rational uh, actor that uh, many have thought him to be in the past. That's an open book. Senator Bob Menendez, thank you very much for your time.